Okay, so we're gonna talk about something called chemical equilibrium. So up until now, we have been looking at chemical reactions existing like this, where we have reactants on the left-hand side, and then an arrow, and then products on the right-hand side. And sometimes we represent this as A plus B, gives us C plus D, so reactants and then products. So this is not really the whole picture of what's happening in a chemical reaction because most chemical reactions are actually reversible. And what reversible means is that the reaction is happening in what we call the forward direction. That means it's also happening in the reverse direction. So in this um, chapter, and anytime we're talking about equilibrium, you're gonna see a double-sided arrow instead of a single-sided arrow. This double-sided arrow means that this reaction is reversible. Up until now, we've really only been talking about chemical reactions proceeding in one direction, which we would call the forward reaction. So um, an arrow pointing to the right-hand side, this is called the forward reaction. An arrow pointing to the left-hand side, this would be called the reverse reaction. So we'll just define some of this terminology as we proceed through. So what equilibrium is, chemical equilibrium, is defined as when the rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction. So equilibrium happens when there is no more what we call net change. So at equilibrium, there is no net change in either the products or reactants. So what this is saying here is that the rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction. It does not mean that this reaction has stopped happening. Sometimes you'll see a chemical equilibrium um, defined as dynamic. It's a dynamic chemical equilibrium because the forward and the reverse rates are still happening. Reactants are still being turned into products. Products are still being turned into reactants, but we're at equilibrium because those rates are equal and opposite. One thing that we want to get really clear from the very beginning is that chemical equilibrium is not when the concentration of the products equals the concentration of the reactants. That is not what chemical equilibrium is. Chemical equilibrium is when the rates of the forward and the rates of the reverse reactions are equal and opposite, not when the concentrations are equal and opposite. This is a very common mistake. People assume equilibrium means equal concentrations. It does not. Equilibrium means equal rates. The rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction. So the concentrations are not changing. There's no net change in the concentration, but the concentrations are not equal. So that's what we mean when we talk about dynamic chemical equilibrium. Again, the word dynamic just means that we're moving in contrast to the word static, which means nothing is moving, nothing is changing. 
So let's look at an example. Let's use um, a real example of a reaction to kind of illustrate this. So I'm gonna um, say the reaction. You I are expected to use all of your knowledge from your previous chemistry courses that you would be able to write the chemical equation from a word problem. So if I say hydrogen gas reacts with carbon dioxide gas to produce, uh, sorry, let's not say to produce, let's say is in equilibrium with water vapor and carbon monoxide gas, I would expect you to be able to write this. I'll write the sentence out and then we'll write the formula from that just for this first time. So we'll say hydrogen gas reacts with carbon dioxide gas and is in equilibrium with water vapor and carbon monoxide gas. So from this sentence, you should be able to write the chemical reaction. So let's do that. Hydrogen gas Hydrogen gas is H2. Remember the diatomic molecules. H2, hydrogen is H2. Hydrogen gas reacts with carbon dioxide. I'll put the gas here. Carbon dioxide. And here is an important part. It says it is in equilibrium with. In equilibrium with means this is a double-sided arrow if it said it produced or any of the terminology that we had used before it would be a single-sided arrow so when it says it's in equilibrium with that means now we have a double-sided arrow and this is an equilibrium problem it's in equilibrium with water vapor which is water as a gas and carbon monoxide gas, CO gas. So I would expect you to be able to write the chemical equation, hydrogen and carbon dioxide produce water vapor and carbon monoxide. I would expect you to be able to write that equation from that sentence. So let's, I'll draw out a graph of what this looks like. As this reaction proceeds. So on the y-axis we're going to have concentration. Concentration is in molarity. Remember we use these square brackets to indicate molarity. Remember what molarity is. Molarity is moles per liter, moles of solute per liters of solution. This is by far the most common unit of concentration that we will use. Anytime you see a square bracket like this, it means we're talking about a concentration in molarity. So my y-axis is concentration, my x-axis is time, and I'm just gonna draw the arrow. This really just means this is as the reaction progresses. So I'll write progress of reaction. Okay. So let's say as this chemical reaction starts, um, I'll just make some arbitrary, let's say this is one molar, two molar, three molar. Um, and in this somewhere, it would tell you what these concentrations are. Here, we don't really need to worry about it, but let's say here, my reactants, remember when you start a chemical reaction, you're starting with reactants. So you're gonna have some known concentration of reactants. You don't start with any products at the beginning of a chemical reaction. You just start with the reactants. So I'm just gonna say we have about three molar of the, cons of the reactants. And as the reaction progresses, the concentration of the reactants is gonna decrease. It's gonna decrease because some of it is being used to make products. When we start this chemical reaction, 
we do not start with any of the products. So the initial concentration of the products is zero. And as the reaction proceeds, products begin to get made. So here are my reactants. And here's my products. So as this reaction proceeds, the concentration of the reactants are decreasing and the concentration of the products are increasing. So if you were thinking about this in terms of some change, you would say that the reactants are decreasing, it's being subtracted by some amount. Products are increasing, it's increasing by some amount. Now, remember that we said chemical equilibrium is when the rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction. What we're not seeing here are rates. What we are seeing here are concentrations. Remember that equilibrium is not when the concentrations equal each other. Equilibrium is when the rates equal each other. And we're not able to see the rates from this graph here, but chemical equilibrium happens here where the rates are no longer changing. They've equaled out. So now the rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction. Now these concentrations are no, no longer changing. Again, reactants are still being turned into products and products are still being turned into reactants, but the concentrations are no longer changing because the rates are equal and opposite. So this is what chemical equilibrium is. It is when the rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction. It is not when the concentrations are the same. And we'll look, about, look at this a little bit more later.